Hi, okay, we're going to talk about threading a uh, German FAF machine today. Uh, the FAFs are a, the German FAFs are an engineering work of art, and they're an extremely durable machine, extremely precise machine, but they must be threaded properly or they're not going to, they're not going to perform for you. So I want to just review the basics of threading today, and we're going to start with the top part of the machine, which is um, going to require the spool caps. Now the spool caps are actually part of the threading system. They're not just an accessory. So you must use a spool cap when you're um, using thread on a fox. And you want to match your spool cap so that it is slightly larger than the circumference of the spool itself. So a small spool like this which would be a Mettler or a Guterman, you want to use the medium sized spool cap. You don't want to use the tiny spool cap, you want to use the medium size because it's slightly larger in circumference. If, if you use a very large one like this, your thread isn't going to pull off properly. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. If you're using a thread like a dual duty, Coates and Clark dual duty, they have this notch on the end that will, uh, for, for thread storage, they have the notch. And the problem with that is when the thread's coming off, it can get caught in that notch. So you must use the larger spool cap. Again, the spool cap is slightly larger than the circumference of the thread. So you must use the larger one. You place your thread onto the horizontal spool pin, and then you place your cap on so that it fits snugly against the spool. Now, if you're using a smaller, the, the metristine type, the Mettler spool, when you pop it on, you want to make sure that your spool cap fits snugly against the, the top of the spool like that. You don't want to use the pointy end going into the spool because you're going to create a void and that's going to be an area where your, your thread can get caught. So the advantage of a horizontal spool pin is that it holds your thread if you, if you load it properly, it's going to hold your thread in place and give you uh, top performance. As long as we're talking about types of spools, many quilters will use a larger spool such as this or um, one about this size, it's called star thread, and they use it in the well as a horizontal. You don't want to do that because what's going to happen is the spool is so large that the thread is going to drag, it's going to cause drag underneath, and when it hits, goes up to the top, there's less drag and more drag, less drag and more drag, and you're going to get a very inconsistent stitch quality. It's not good for the machine, it's not good for your project, it's not good for your sanity. So what you want to do then is use a, a, an industrial type spool stand. The ones that we have are actually height adjustable, so you can adjust it for the height of your machine. When you're, I'm going to take the lid off for this. You just pinch and the lid comes off. So when you're using a vertical or an industrial spool stand, you just clip it in here, put your thread through the loop, and you want to adjust this so it's somewhat the same height as your machine itself. You can come off a little bit. You don't want the thread cutting into any of the plastic. And then you can go ahead and proceed with threading your machine. And that's going to hold your thread at the proper height. And it's going to feed off in a vertical fashion so that it's not going to catch anywhere on the machine as it's coming off. You're going to get a nice consistent flow of the thread and therefore a nice consistent stitch. Okay, so that's a little bit about threading, and we're going to stop now and zoom in, and you can watch me actually thread up the machine. Okay. All right, now we're going to thread up the machine. I want to talk to you about the different threading points as I'm going along. I'm going to use a nice navy blue thread, so hopefully you can see that. Put the spool cap on so that it's flush, and so that the thread feeds through smoothly. Now when you're threading your machine, you have to hit certain components or the machine will not perform. This is your tension. 
there's a left side and a right side to the tension. It doesn't matter which side you go on. The only reason there's two sides is if you're using a double needle, you can use two pieces of thread through there. But this is your tension. This is your take-up lever. These two, these two components are very important. Now, with the take-up lever, you may not see it. You may not know what it is because it follows the motion of your needle and it only comes all the way up as your needle is starting to move downward. But the take-up lever is what is giving you the slack and tension on your thread to form the stitch. At the end of this threading demonstration, I'm going to show you what happens when you miss the take-up lever. The other important thing that I want to point out is your tension. As if you can see that, it's loose. It wobbles a little bit. And that is because the presser foot is up and your tension discs are open. And your thread can get inside the tension disc. When you lower your presser foot, this is tight. Your tension discs are closed. If you try to thread it with your tension discs closed, your thread won't get in there, and you'll have a bird's nest on the bottom of your fabric. So when we thread, take up lever in the highest position. You can also get to that position by just tapping your presser foot one time if you have the needle up feature, and it'll raise it up to the highest position. Take up lever to the highest position, and tension discs open, which means your presser foot is up. Now we're going to start to thread, and you want to thread with holding the thread in both of your hands. Think about flossing your teeth, and that's what you're going to do. You're going to floss your machine. You'll start at the very back arrow and snap it in place, and then you're going to come down through either the left side or the right side. It doesn't matter. You're going to come down. You're going to follow your arrow, make a U-turn, and come back up and then over left to right into your take-up lever. Make sure that the thread is seated all the way into the hole of the take-up lever that you pass by this little spring, which is actually going to keep the thread in place for you. Then you're gonna come straight down and you're going to come into either the left or the right side of your thread guide. The thread guide is a two-handed deal also. And then at this point, I want you to do a tension check. So at this point, I want you to pull the thread and then lower the foot, and it should get so tight that it could hardly come through. It's hardly going to pull through. If you lower your foot and it's just a little bit tight, then you probably did not, either you didn't get it seated all the way in your tension, or you might have a tiny piece of thread in your tension disc, which is keeping your uh, disc from applying full pressure onto the thread. It doesn't need to be much. It just needs to be a little piece of thread and it's going to keep it from closing properly. So it's going to get very tight. And then you'll use your needle threader or you're going to thread your needle uh, front to back. To use your needle threader, we're just going to bring it down, swing it in. It's hard to do this in slow motion. And let it hook through to your through the needle. I'm going to just talk about the needle threader just a little bit. We're going to do a short video on that as well. But with your needle threader, you should not use anything smaller than a size 8012 needle. We'll explain the whys and the why nots um, in another video. But don't use any smaller than a size 8012, which I know negates the whole purpose of a needle threader, but that's the way life is. So we have our needle threaded and then we want to load our bobbin. The bobbin has to load into the bobbin case so that it turns clockwise. So it's basically coming off the top to the right. It's hard to see because it's white thread. Okay, off the top and to the right. So we're going to lay our bobbin case in here. I'm just trying to give you a little contrast here so you can see. Opening to the top, drop the bobbin in so that it's turning clockwise. Then you will bring it down into the slot and up through the spring. And there's a, a small uh, release hole in there. And that is what should happen when you have your bobbin loaded properly. 
should hold itself in place. Pull your thread and make sure there's a, there's some tension on the thread. And when you when you shake it, it should drop just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna reload this real quick. <clears throat> so we come turning right. Another way to look at this is when you're looking at your bobbin as it's loaded into the bobbin case, it's going to form a V. It's going to form a V. You either snap it in like that, or you hold out the lever and pop it in and close the lever. But you want to make sure that's seated all the way in. Then you will just turn your hand wheel to raise up your bobbin thread. Take up lever at the top, and we will, we will test out our fabric. Okay, so we have it all threaded. We've done our little tension check to make sure that our thread is locked in there nice and tight. And we're going to do a quick stitch out just to make sure everything's good. And it is. I can tell already that everything is sewing beautifully. You can see the stitching on the back. I'm using navy on the front. But you can see the stitching on the back. There's no loops. There's no jamming. So everything is threaded properly. Now at this point, once you've threaded your machine properly, uh, once you've threaded your machine properly, you want to also test with the zigzag. And you can see on the back there, get a nice zigzag stitch. Once you know how to thread it and you've threaded it properly, thread it five times a day, every day, for a week. So you can kind of imprint in your mind correct threading on the, on the fox. It doesn't mean you're never going to make a mistake, but it will mean that when you do make a mistake, you'll be able to identif identify it more uh, quickly. Now, when it comes time to unthread and change your thread, you always want to clip at the top and pull it out through the needle. Never pull it backwards. Don't be a yanker. Don't yank the thread backwards because what you'll do is you'll leave little deposits of thread in your tension and then that's when you're going to get a funky looking stitch as well. Okay, now what I'm going to do is thread it up and miss the take up lever intentionally so you can see what happens when you don't thread it properly. So, you know, you're going to, you're obviously would be going through the motions, but for whatever reason, you missed it. And then we're going to thread it up. And within three or four stitches, you're going to know something's wrong. See, I still get a nice tight tension. So I think everything is just hunky-dory. And then I start to stitch. Hear that? And I've got a mess on the back. It really isn't stitching at all. Often, often it'll, there we go. It's going to just stop and jam. And that is because you did not get it in your take-up lever on the top. Once you re-thread it into your take-up lever, again, it, it will sew perfectly. Now notice that I am um, threading my needle with my presser foot down. Once you get it into your tension, you can lower your presser foot. It's much easier to use your needle threader if your presser foot is down because it locks your thread in place. Beautiful. No knocking, no jamming, no thread breaking because it's in all of my threading components properly. And um, I'll show you one more thing. I'm going to re-thread one more time. But this time, I'm going to re-thread it with the presser foot down and the tension disc locked or closed. And of course, it's kind of like going to the doctor when you want something, something to screw up and you just can't get it to do it, but we're gonna, we're gonna give it our best shot here. So we'll straight stitch. Sounds nice. Look on the back. Is 
is what happens when you don't get your thread seated into the tension. So those are the two most common mistakes when you're threading. You are either are not getting in your tension or you're not getting it into your pickup lever. And that is probably enough information for now. Thank you.